going back that to the drive-by. What was that? <laughs> Drive by. There was a drive by meow. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry, sorry. Welcome back to Pop Broken Souls. I am your DM Hatter, and these are all my lovely players. I lied. Yeah. I'm not sorry. I know you're not. Uh, we are unfortunately again missing Ellen, but she's coming, going back home. So, you know, she'll be, should hopefully be here next week. Okay, so, last time, the party, uh, left the vault, uh, left Tulsa's vault, gained word that, uh, Alphonse was in trouble, and headed north, and, and they began to warn everyone they could about the coming storm. In a play I didn't see coming, the party... Decided to negotiate for Alphonse. They had an interesting talk with Lazarus, got Alphonse out of there, and. Well, not technically. They went down to the basement, got Alphonse, and as they're walking out, a super mutant, surprisingly friendly, points to Thread and says, Pretty lady. I believe that's where we left off. Fuck. Yes. Oops, not me. Sorry. Damn it. Uh, he, like, looks down at you as a, um... Uh... As, like, an assistant comes over and kind of, like, takes him by the arm. Hey. It, it looks like a child grabbing... Trying to grab an adult's arm, but... Hey, can you understand me? He, 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 the assistant's trying to, like, turn him away, and he's not resisting, but he is, like, looking over his shoulder and goes, Lazarus, not nice guy. Hey. We picked up on that. Tower. What will it cost me for him to come with us, too? Uh, I don't know. It's not my job. You have to talk to Lazarus. I don't think we can negotiate any more with him. Um, Thren goes over to the super mutant and leans up as far as she can. Um, kind of like on tiptoes. We'll try and come back for you, okay? He, 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 like, like, scratches at his stomach where you know he got shot, and he seems to be, like, looking at you, like, not quite sure everything that's happening. Threnody just furrows her brow and goes back to the others, looking troubled. Clark, too. Okay. And uh, you go back up to the main floor. Yep. Um, from here, <laughs> do we try and get Cecil? Uh, I believe Claire and Oswin were already going that way. That's right. Yes. I forgot we split up. We went to go deal with... We went to go get him. We went to go get the kid. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Party. Anyway. So, yes, uh, the, the healer and the rogue go off in one direction. So, <laughs> yes, so, yeah, you can get Cecil pretty easily. Um, and to do that, okay. we have to return to um, Clark's family's apartment, correct? Yes. All right. Um, I assume Clark would probably tag along. Well, yeah, that's the big thing. <laughs> Yeah. So presumably after that, Thread and Clark hurried to catch up with the others or something, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it would actually take you more time to get down to the lab and then back up than it would for them to get the apartments and back. So by the time you've got to us, we're probably already coming back with Cecil. I mean, do you want to retcon that Clark went with the others? 
Clark didn't want Thren to go alone, though, is the thing. Um, could Oswin have come with Thred instead? Um, Andrea? All right, if you're okay with that. Yeah, Clark didn't do much anyways, so... Okay. Except glare, except glare at Tower. <laughs> okay, so retcon that Threnody and Oswin went to go and get Alphonse. Clark and Claire went to, uh... Le- Luisa's family's apartment. Mm-hmm. She would have been gripping at Thren's arm. Fair. Very fair. Oh, baby. So, Clark, uh, I guess when they head back to the apartment, uh, Clark quietly knocks. Hello. It's us again. We haven't made a decision. Um, oh, that's fine. We're just here for the kid. Cecil, take, we, take we're it. not here to kidnap your child. Yeah, we're not. We're not. We're not here to take the kid. I mean, we were. We dropped off the kid to make sure he was safe, and he is. So, we wanted to see if the kid, if Cecil, wanted to come with us. Where are you going? Um. Well, uh, oh, wow. um, yeah, Clark kind of falls silent for a moment as he realizes that this place is likely under surveillance, or possibly at okay. least. Honestly, um, away from here. I'm, I'm not sure if anyone bad is listening or not, so I don't know if we should say... Out loud, at least. Um, uh, is it okay for Clark to have a scrap of paper and a pencil in his pocket? Sure. Right, he pulls that out. Somewhere else. Somewhere and, else. Safe, probably. And he writes down the Chandry in Emerald Hills on the paper, folds it, and slips it under the door. Well, and he, uh, he adds, um, it's safe there. He's going to be in good hands. I mean, he's he's in good hands here, I'm sure, but I don't... But, uh, oh, yeah, I know, he's in, I know he's in good hands here. You'll be in good hands there as well, but we just want to make sure that he's okay with it. What we're trying to say is you guys... We want- we want Cecil to be safe and have a nice childhood as much yeah. as you can for the trauma he's going to probably have. What we're trying to say, actually, is that you guys are perfectly capable, but the area you live in isn't safe for Cecil, so we are taking him there. Clark listens to hear if they take the paper and open it. They do. And... Because uh, this would be like later, later in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, they say he's uh, he's asleep at the moment. Uh, I... Um. Okay. Um. I guess we can wait. Um. Or, you know, Claire's pretty good with kids. Maybe she can pick him up without waking him. You can for do that. You can have to hold Nora. There is. Um. Okay. I can't, I can't carry. I can't carry a big gun and a child at the same time. That's fair. Um. I'm strong, but I'm not Superman. Um. And Clark seems like he's not sure what to say for a moment. And then he says, "I I know you guys are still talking about it. Um. But." No rush. Yeah, and no rush, but um, we are going to leave soon. So if if you want to come with us, we'd um, we'd be happy to have you. We'd make sure you stayed safe, and uh, you'd be really happy at the Chandry, I think. Oh, yeah, you'd be really yeah. happy at that place, I think. Um. Uh, so. 
we'd, we'd be happy to have you, but the... Um, no pressure. Yeah. The, if you want to stay, you can stay. If you want to come, come. It's, it's up to you. The, the most important thing to me is that you guys, you guys are safe. So if you decide to come with us, that would be one way. But however way you stay safe, that's what matters. Just um, come and find us, I guess, if you want to come. Yeah, um, we'll be at insert directions here. Downstairs, probably. Uh, I mean, Sissel isn't our so child, it? <laughs> so we can't stop you. No, today. but you're, you're probably, have no doubt that you're uh, good parents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She just sort of gives uh, Clark a playful elbow. Um, Clark looks down a bit sheepishly. Uh, yeah. Um, I just, uh, I just, you know, thought Wanna even make sure so. you're safe. Yeah, yeah. Look, this is a lot to process. Yeah, that's fine. We'll I... uh, be around when you get to your decision. Or we won't, and if we aren't, you know where we're going. You know where to find us. Mm-hmm. And um, if I think Clark's silent for a moment, I am. Um, I know we talked about potential issues with uh memory and stuff and uh if you if you come with us we uh, we can take you to a place where you can check that out a bit more thoroughly um but again uh no pressure and up to you all all that matters is that you're safe yeah no pressure I know it sounds like we're trying to pressure, but I, honestly, it's it's entirely up to you. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. I I don't mean to. I just want to make sure you you guys have all the information. You know. It's been a rough week for everyone, probably. Uh, for me especially, um, but yeah, for a lot of people. Oh, that was a long story. Yeah, we'll um. We'll get out of your hair now. Yeah. Um, Claire, should we get him while he's asleep or wait till he wakes up? Uh, I don't say it's, it's best to leave him if he's sleeping. I guess it's not going to hurt too much if we stay a little longer. All right. We'll, uh, we'll wait downstairs. Okay. And then they just head off downstairs. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you are freaking these people out. <laughs> We're trying not to. But it's not helping. It's it's kind of hard not to. There is not much... Uh, not <laughs> really a way to make this better. Not really a way for it to not suck. Uh, catch up with Thren and Oz. Yep. yep. So you, you what? So you can do that. Yep. Um, Clark gives them both hugs when he sees them again. Hey, are uh, you guys doing okay? I I know it's no fun for either of you to go down there. Both of us very brave. Clark gives her a kiss on the forehead. She's always really brave. Oswin is clutching Clark. Mm-hmm. So I guess it uh, went all right on your end then. Well, we got our phones. Other than that. Clark nods at him. Other than that, debatable. I'll tell you about it when we get out. Yeah. Cecil's uh, still asleep, so. Oh, we're going to wait. Bother him. We're going to wait until he wakes up. Uh, 
Well, if he's not up when we do actually leave, then, well, yeah, I guess we'll just wait until he gets up. You don't really want to force anything on the kid that age of what he's just been through. How are you holding up, Pinecone? Here we go. You're not the only one we're getting out of here today. Okay. Since we got a bit of time, I suppose I should tell you. He's just kind of like standing there wide-eyed with a duffel bag. He's just like... <laughs> He's ready to go. He's ready to go. He's just like, please, can we go? Please. <laughs> I suppose since we have a bit of time, I might as well tell you. They, uh, they turn people into super mutants here. So... Okay. Yeah, no, we are definitely getting that kid out of here. Yeah. Weird. And we're putting an end to that once we, uh... I mean, we're not going to talk we'll just too add loudly. that. I mean, we're not going to talk too loudly about that, but yeah. Yeah. Just uh, add that to the list of things we're going to do. Remember, I'm not sure where to put it. Remember that Lazarus mark that Raphael shot and we saved? Hmm? He found out the hard way that Lazarus is not a nice guy. Oh. Okay, so... Uh... Yeah, that's definitely going on the list. Mm, list. Yeah, I'm going to be talking to Wendy and Teddy about possible <sighs> reverse engineering of whatever turns people into super mutants, so we can maybe undo that. Isn't that that glowing, green glowy shit? FEV. Yeah. Got a list as long as my arm of all the things we need to fix. Oops, sorry, bump my yeah. microphone there. If you invent a cure for that, is it going to be called Viv? <laughs> Clark face palms. <laughs> we'll see. Got to invent it first. Yeah. You will. I know you will. If anyone can do it, it's you and your friends. <laughs> it's you and your folks. Yeah, pretty much. I um, mean, you know, assuming the Empire hasn't blown up half of the Chandra. Yeah, well, I trust Wendy and Teddy and Belisarius to keep everyone in line. Blah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Clark, Clark says, don't worry, um, Bell knows that, uh, if he fucks up, then he'll be sleeping on the couch, and he winks at Thren. Don't What's you? left of the couch? Not sure we have a couch. Not sure we have room for a couch anymore. We'll have to get a couch, and then we'll make him sleep on it. Hell no, I'm not getting a couch just for him. <laughs> <laughs> you can um, sleep on one of the, one of the experiment, or one of the, one of the specimen tables. He can sleep outside because um, the couch is too good for him. There you go. The non-existent couch. Down. The non-existent couch is too good. Well, Take I mean... Take one of the bog slabs upstairs. You can sleep on that. <laughs> um, Oswin says, we can build a dog house, and Clark points and nods, and he goes, there, that, that's the, <laughs> those are the kind of ideas that we need. Well done, Oswin. He's in the little dog house. I mean, this is very true, but he hasn't actually done anything wrong yet. <laughs> this is just, we're just making We're assumptions. just anticipating. <laughs> We are anticipating. Anticipating the inevitable explosion. Mm. Court gives Oswin a kiss. Yeah, we give it about, I don't know, maybe 10, 20 minutes, see if he's up. Mm. Depends on how long he's been napping, but... We just... Well, he was pretty out of it when I got him. Should, so. we, should we time skip to when Cecil wakes up? Should. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to say that it takes a long time because we need to get you guys out of here. So. Uh... 
I mean, we'll just give it... Like, she's probably going to go and get him regardless, because now that the whole super moon thing has been revealed, she's like, yep, yeah, no, don't care, he's coming with us. Fair. It's like, I was going to let him choose. Now he doesn't get to choose. I was going to let him choose. Now I'm choosing for him. Yeah. One of those cases where safety and health overrides bodily autonomy. Yes. Yeah. They are rare, but they exist. Yep. I uh, should give it probably about 10, 20 minutes, and if he's not up, and then she's just going to go for him, regardless of if he's up or not. Oh, no, yeah, he's definitely not going to be up in 20 minutes. Uh, oh, well, we're going to have to wake him. Um, she'll just go up by herself, just to avoid any unnecessary conflict. Well, Clark tries to tag along. <laughs> Clark tries, and she's just like, nah, uh, it's all right. It's, we've, we've bothered them enough. I'll, I'll be quick. Thren puts Clark a hand would... on Clark's shoulder. I know we agreed that no one would go off on their own, but it is just up the building and back. I'm sure she'll be fine. Okay. Um, Thren, meanwhile, so is looking over at Alphonse and making sure he's not injured. Oh, he seems totally fine. Well, good, that doesn't take long. <laughs> like, he's like, oh, I'm, once over. I'm physically fine. I've been I'm hiding fine. all day. So, so, she'll just go out. Just sort of give a light knock on the door. And she's like, yeah, um, I know I said I wouldn't, we wouldn't bother you again, but uh, circumstances changed. It's just me. Don't worry. I'm just, you know... I don't know if he's up or not, but I'm, I'm gonna... Yeah, as, as I said, I was gonna wait for him to wake up and let him choose, but new evidence has arose and circumstances has changed, so um, I'm choosing for him. They can't stop you. Yeah, I'll, I'll be quick, don't worry. I'll just uh, nip in and out. Yeah, you can go go. And no, she'll, she'll do just that. She'll just, as, like, as soon as they open the door, she'll just sort of apologize again and just quickly nip in, lift him up, and nip out again. And then come back down with, to get with the others. Carrying the small child. Carrying the small child. Mark's kind of looking at his feet a bit, and he's, and he just, you know, quietly to avoid waking the baby. Um, he, uh, he says, I was, I knew it was a long shot, but I, I really hoped they'd, they'd come with us. I know, I was hoping that too, but circumstances being what they are, I suppose there's no real way to persuade them. Yeah, well, I mean, at least, at least we got them to consider it, you know? Yep, we did what we could. I, uh... I slipped him a paper saying we're heading to the Chandry. Um, All right. So I'm glad you I guess. Say it out loud. Yeah, yeah. I figured they've got surveillance everywhere. So yeah, I slipped him a paper, and I I guess if they decide, we'll hopefully see them within the next few days. Can but hope. Well, shall we? I don't mean to be a pain, but uh, can, can somebody take Nora? Uh, Clark takes it. <laughs> Both the gun and the child are heavy. And, and she just sort of, as carefully as she can without waking Cecil, just sort of slip it off her shoulder so uh, it can, Clark can snag it and stick it over his back. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's get outside. Mm -hmm. Clark tries to hold Oswin's hand. They don't stop him. Um, so I'm presuming we go outside and then head back to the cart? Oh, and Oswin holds Clark's hand back. Mm -hmm. so Alright, sounds we... like we're heading to the cart. Yep, do we manage to make it to the cart without any incident? Yep, nothing happens. Cool. We get to the cart. 
um, first thing Theron does is check the radio. Um, uh, what are you checking for? She's just messaging Smack Talk and asking him if he has had any messages for them while they were gone. No. Cool. I didn't think about it. In which case, um, onward to Emerald Hills. Emerald Sounds Hills. good. Okay, so here's the question. You're going straight to Emerald Hills, but, uh, okay, you're going straight to Emerald Hills. I mean, was there somewhere else we were meant to go? Uh, not particularly. I mean, Miss Chase is still having the issue, but they're also holding out, so it, it, it can wait. I mean, Threnody can get in touch with Miss Cherry and say, we've got a radio now if you want to coordinate with us. Oh, good. Okay. So, Miss Cherry now knows that she can contact them. Okay, so you want me to take a few... Oh, one second. Is that a oh, fan? Sorry. What? Oh, I, I was wondering if that was a fan in the background. Um, anyway. Yes, it's going to take you a few days to get to Emerald. Okay. <sighs> yeah, so. Is there anything you want to do on your way to Emerald Hills? I'm assuming, by the way, that we're taking Alphonse to Emerald Hills. That's what I was thinking, yeah. Yeah. Um, Thren will keep in touch with Emerald Hills just to make sure that they're still okay and to let them know that they're coming and they're bringing a guest and that kind of thing. She's just basically okay. going to fill them in on stuff. Okay. Uh, Lazarus, Lazarus, uh, I'm trying to think of, like, if anything happened. Roll perception. Okay. Oh, I need a rolls room. <laughs> I think someone linked Big it. system mode. Yeah, it's out there. I've been like a snoop picture. Just PM do you, Hunter. Oh yes. Hmm. I'm having I'm having to do like I'm having to keep track of like four different groups here. Hold on. <laughs> okay. So um. You haven't hit Emerald Falls yet. Uh, when um, Claire, you hear something. Um, you hear something uh, akin to a small animal crying uh, off of the path you're taking in in like a ditch. Okay. I mean, that doesn't really bother her. Uh, does anyone else hear it? I just... Funny you can hear it. Okay. Hey, um, does anyone well, else hear that? We're waiting for Andrew to run. Uh, hear what? Oh, Andrew hasn't rolled yet. Okay, sorry. I was waiting for Rom's I was away. Oh, actually, I don't think I've rolled it either. Nope. So. Oh, yes. <sighs> so there we go. Okay. Now I can type. There we go. Not natural 20. So you can also hear it. Um, Osmond, I'm going to give you a bonus because of this is something in your ballpark. So. Because it's an animal. Yeah, everyone can hear it. Clark peeks over the edge of the cart. Uh, Threnody is going to look in the direction of the noise. Is like a like a ditch, a, like a side ditch where like rainwater would like rush off, uh, and Os um, the noise is coming from there. Oswin moves to try and see it. Threnody looks at her. Should we go check it out? Sounds Clark like has already hopped. Clark has already hopped out of the cart. Ho Oswin is hopping off the cart too. Um, Thren will let Oswin and Clark handle this, but she has her gun uh, at the ready just in case. 
just in case so as you being dangerous. You approach the the um, the ditch, and in the ditch, kind of flipped up on its back, is this four-legged animal that has fur, but it's kind of patchy. It's really patchy, um, and it's kind of like flailing its front two paws up in the air while whining. It's like a towel that's been flipped. <laughs> kind of. I mean, I mean, it could probably like try and roll over, but because of the way the ditch is like formed, it'd be kind of difficult for it to do it. So it's just kind of like lay there with its front paws, which has cl- have claws on the end, flailing about weakly. Just going, um, Clark tentatively approaches, reaches down, and tries to help the little thing turn over. Well, is it, li- is it little? Yeah, yeah, it's about the size of a small child. Oh. Um, it's clear- clearly like a, a very small animal. Um, and... Ooh... Oh, uh, you don't actually want to cross one of these. So, Osman, roll me nature. Wow! 27. Yeah, no, this is a mutated bear. Uh, also known in the wasteland as a yaogwai. Huh. It's a very small yaogwai. Oh, it's just a baby. It's just a little cub. Yeah. So, yeah, um, Maybe it's still really tough, though. Yeah. I mean, you said it's the size of a small child. That's, that's you know, maybe dog-sized, and he has claws and teeth. Well, boy or girl. Hold on. <laughs> Flip a coin. That's yes, what I'm doing. Come on, dice. These. Female. Oh. See, so yeah, Clark kneels down and gently helps turn over. It, it like clings to you, like you're like a, a a cub would to a tree. Oh, oh, okay. Hi. And Clark kind of wraps his arms um, around and starts to gently pet. Hi. It continues to whine. Um. Yeah. Uh. And uh, Clark. Uh, scoots towards Oswin and like she's clinging um, the bear um, is clinging to him so he's just kind of like I can't re- exactly hold her out but he scoots closer to Oswin this was uh, Oswin was asking Clark can I see her yeah sorry I forgot to say that is she hard? Um, so two things happen one uh, as you get closer you can see that she, there is uh, blood matted on her fur it doesn't look like her blood though um and when you come within, like, grabbing distance, her front two paws reach out and are now, like, hooked around your neck, like like she's holding onto you, but her, like, feet, her bottom two paws are still wrapped around Clark. Uh, okay. Clark is gently petting her. Yes, hi. She continues to whine. She, she's whining less now that she's holding on to Oswin and Oswin petting her. Oswin pets her and attempts to tame. Roll to tame. It's gonna be pretty easy because she's not fighting you. Yeah. Three. And now, uh, uh, it's been it's been a while since you tamed something, so I don't quite recall uh, how many what you need to roll. It's a survival DC, says Andrea. I believe so. Okay. Um, put it as a DC 15. You passed two of them. You're fine. Yeah, you succeed. <laughs> She's now yours. Um, out of interest, uh, is this Yao guy going to make a good combat pet? Um, just, it's... Just because we're going into endgame and it would be really good if Oswin had more pets that could fight, you know? It'll definitely be able to fight, but it's kind of like, it's kind of whining and not, you know, well taken care of right now. Oh yeah, sure, like, but you give, know, once, like a day. once Oswin, like, looks after her a bit, will she be more 
Um, oh yeah, it's a Yagwai. It, yeah, it, it'll, it'll be combat, but it's not gonna be like a full blown Yagwai, but it'll be able to fight. Uh, better than nothing. Don't worry. Uh, she's gonna get another pet before uh, uh, the shit hits the fan. Okay. That, would, that, that, that would be good. Yep, combat pets are definitely good. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, yes. Uh, so. Uh, you... Okay, Rose to the court. Are you naming her Rose? That's a really oh. nice name. Alright, Clark does in fact help carry. Oh. You know what, Andrea? Roll me a luck roll. Um, I'll let her re-roll that. Um, Is it... Uh, I don't know if it's under or above. Um, oh. yeah, take my, take my re-roll. Why does it take so long? That's more like it. Oh. <whistles> Wait, is that... Is Ulrich you, Hunter? Yes. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't have a name prepared. Okay. So. But yeah, that's definitely under her luck. So surprises are gonna happen. Can we get a hint as to what kind of surprises? Rose is special. Okay. Okay. So well. <laughs> figure that out and type that up soon. Uh, is there anything else anyone wants to do before you hit Emerald Hills? Um, Clark is sitting with Oswin and presumably gushing over the new baby with her. It's like, it's like holding a really large teddy bear. Yeah, Clark is like very snuggling with her. He, he just loves this. He's just like OMG bear. I love it. Uh, uh, okay. Alswin uh, is petting and grooming her and making her comfortable. Oh. And Clark is helping because he's just like, this is my baby too. Because if it's your baby, that makes it my baby. I don't want to give her a bow. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Do you know what this means? Oh. Ring bear! Ring bear! Oh my god. We don't have a ring bearer for the wedding. We have a ring bear! Ring bear. <laughs> she just comes in with like a the ring bearer pillow strapped to her head. Yes! <laughs> Let's strap to her back. Oh, her back? Okay. And she's like waddling. She's or waddling. She, or she waddles in on, on her back two legs because bears can walk on two legs. It's, oh, it's difficult, it? but they can. Oh. What was that? She carries it like. Yeah, so like she just comes in waddling up on two legs like a person, like a human, and she's holding it on the pillow. Oh, and with her yeah, front yeah that's a good point, she, Andrea. She can have it in her mouth. <laughs> we have a ring bear. It's a ring bear. Er. <laughs> bear, 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 bear. Hey. Onward to Emerald Hills. Onward. So you you pass Emerald Falls. Keep going. You hit Emerald Hills, and Emerald Hills is the same. You actually notice uh, a few things that are different. Uh, as you get in closer to the town, uh, there are physical defenses set up uh, on the edge of town. Good. We need uh, it. Chest high walls, sandbags. Uh, I don't remember what they're called, but they're the, like, taking uh, sharpened sticks and crossing them and um, putting them in a line. Yeah, they're, they're a kind of barricade, but I don't remember the technical yeah. term. Yeah. It, it, it's, it was, like, specifically designed to stop, like, cavalry and shifts and such. We shall call them pointy sticks. Pointy sticks. <laughs> the pointy stick wall. The pointy stick wall. Uh, Those things what you have to break down in the Skyrim Civil War quest. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, you... You actually see several uh, Empire uh, people walking around and seeming to be guards and keeping eyes out. 
uh, Threnody is unconsciously keeping an eye out for um, Belisarius and Arnothus. And you know what, Teddy's boyfriend too, for good measure. <laughs> um, Clark is still snuggling with the bear, but once we pass by the Green Mile, Clark's gonna wanna, you know. See the Riley? Yes. And see his other baby. <laughs> see his other baby, yes. Yes, so you get. So, you're gonna go into the Green Mile? Yeah, Clark, like, hops out of the cart and heads inside. You go to the Green Mile, and as you walk in, uh, she's sitting there at one of the stools, and she turns around and sees you. And she comes, she jumps off the stool, comes over to you, and looks up at you. Hey, baby girl. She motions for you to come down. He sits down, cross-legged in front of her. She bops your head. What's, what's that mean? Pops your head again. Oh. And he reaches into his stuff, pulls out um, the horns, and puts them back on. <laughs> she readjusts the horns to make them more even. So he gives you a thumbs up. There we go. I'm, uh, I'm sorry I, I didn't get to wear them the whole time. Alswin is going to the lake with the pets for playtime slash training. Yeah. Clark is actually like struggling not to cry right now. And uh he reaches out to hug her. She she hugs you. He kind of gathers her up and he's sniffling a little bit. Oh, I hope you know how much I love you. She holds out her arms. As far as they will go on either side of her. Oh God! I love you this much. <laughs> and then she looks at it. She like goes from hand to hand, shakes her head, gets out of your like hug, goes over to one end of the bar, and puts her like left hand there, and then walks over to the other side and puts her right hand there. Oh God damn it! <laughs> I love you as much as this. <laughs> um, I can't reach as far as much as I love you. <laughs> I love for you is approximately the size of this bar. <laughs> Clark does a little bit of a laugh cry, and he's just like, no, it's more like, I'd say it's the size of the entire universe. Or, you know what, I'd actually say it's she, the size of infinity. She looks from one end of the bar to the other. And Riley's like, yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, that's what I indicated. In <laughs> All she knows is the Dad? existence of the bar. Weren't you paying attention, Daddy? No, I at already said I love you as much as the universe. We said the other end of the bar. I looked sad that her love is not as great as yours. Oh no! <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> um. As far as the east is from the west. Oh my god. Oh. 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 Andrea, that's scoots. beautiful. Oh my god, that is. So beautiful. Can I, like, oh. use that at some point? I want to use that. Honestly. Honestly. Um, Clark scoots forward a little bit more um, and reaches out um, to. Um, if she, you know, says no or tries to get away, he won't make her. No, she hugs. But uh, he kind of gathers her up in his arms and on her on his lap, and he's just like, "Hey, it's a, uh, it's okay if you don't feel the same way, you know. Um, I mean, I I know you haven't known me so long. Um, I know that, you know, as far as you're concerned, especially at this age, you know, I'm not daddy so much as I am guy that comes by to play with you and bring you toys every once in a while. So, you know." I get that we need more time together before, you know, before, you know. Well, you know, the thing is, too, the way the way I see it is that as you get older, you're going to get bigger, too. So your your arms can spread out more, and so you can love me more, like, like this. And he spreads his arms out. 
So you're saying when basically you're saying when she grows up she can love you more. <laughs> she, she looks at you, nods, <laughs> and then goes over to the stool, ball stool, and sits up, sits up on it, and then climbs, stands up on top of that, and gets up on top of the ball. Oh dear! She's um, not taller than you. Um, excuse me. Um, that that's not she what tall. She spreads her arms again. I'm excuse me. She has exactly <laughs> the right idea, and Sprig would back me up on this. <laughs> um, she is tall, T O L tall. Um, Clark goes. That's not entirely how being tall works, Riley. It's <laughs> it's about you know how how tall you are from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. You not... dream killer. <laughs> not uh how... toes, because of course not... she's barefoot. Not uh, how how high your head is from the ground. She does that thing where they pushes her lips and they go they go from like one side to the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She jumps off the bar and runs to the back. Well, hey, get your you little know. shoes. Um, and he chases after her, and as he's following her, he says, "You know, Riley, um, I uh, you know, no pressure or nothing, but um." From, from what I understand, shouldn't you, uh, shouldn't you be talking by now? More than you are, at least. I mean, you, you can talk however she much has, you want. She has, like, grabbed something and then circumvented you. Well, and he's I, back in the ball. Um, <laughs> excuse me, and he follows her. Better to be silent and thought the fool than to open your mouth and reveal all doubt. She so her to actually say that. Because, because you didn't say how tall you are from your toes. She takes her shoes and places them in front of the door to yep. the ball. Yep. And then goes over to the stool, gets on top of that, stands on it, and then gets on top of the ball. And then uh, see? Out, puts, out, puts her hands out again. That is not what I meant. You, you know that's not what I meant. She is a genius. <laughs> Stop stifling her creativity. <laughs> well, he's grinning as he's saying it. Okay. So. And, uh, so, he scoops her up again. He goes, so, Riley, um, oh, I got something serious to talk about for a second. Um. She, did you come over to her when you say this? What was that? Did you come over to her when you said this? Yeah, he was gonna try to pick her. Lips. He was gonna try to pick her up again. Nope, she squirms out of you. She puts her finger in your lips and keeps her quiet. She jumps off, goes back to the back room, and then comes back and she has a hat on. She gets back up on top of the ball. It's okay. like it's, it's not it's not like a it's a it's like um oh what are they called um it's one of the fu the fuzzy hats that you can pull down and have those flaps that cover your ears. Oh my goodness. He oh, puts uh, that on was... and pulls it down and across the forehead it says serious. Oh my god. It's a no. serious hat. Um, oh god, I don't know how, how to pronounce it. Usanka? Usanaka? Ushanka. Ushanka, thank you. Um, I think that's the kind of hat it is. Um, <sighs> Let's not rush into any pronunciations. Because <laughs> it sounds Russian. I'll see myself out. It is actually Russian. I know. It is. <laughs> I'm, I'm so upset, Dally. I'm so upset that I'm I love sorry. you. I will leave forever. No. Goodbye. No. Need oh, you. We're just, we're just stalling for time. No. God damn it, Smarty. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so Russian puns aside. Just putting that joke in there. Oh, God damn it. And uh, so he scoops her up again with her permission. Um, and he goes, so, do you remember, I'm, well, I don't remember if I told you or not, but, uh, when we were going to go fight the bad guys, um, I was also gonna go look for my mommy, and she would be your grandma. Do you know what, do you know what that means? She's, like, thinking. She's thinking really hard. So... Well, um, while you think about that, I wanted to let you know that I found her. 
and she is married and she has another kid besides me so um if and when i hope she does but if she decides to come visit us here in emerald hills you're gonna get a grandma maybe a grandpa and you're gonna get an aunt she like she like looks over at uh points a finger at her and looks at a finger and comes to you and points at you and holds with another finger and looks at her two fingers um and she seems to be contemplating points to herself holds her three fingers and looks at her three fingers um she's thinking she's staring she's, she's like staring at those three fingers really intensely and then you can almost see her mouth the word grandma and then oh the pinky comes up Oh goodness. And she's counting. Like, yeah, she's counting. And and she looks, she looks at her six fingers. <laughs> like really intensely. Like like you just basically told her she's about to double the size of her family. She doesn't know how to take it. <laughs> he, he laughs a little bit and he says, you know, that's that's not even counting the fact that, you know, we're gonna have Oswin be your other mom too. She drops both her hands and just goes, go, go. Like, she, she does <laughs> She just throws her hands in the air, like, I'm, I'm done. Daddy, no. I am trying to math. I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm like, out. My hands climbs down off the ball. <laughs> oh, he laughs and he goes, it, I mean, we can count um, Threnody as an auntie, right? Down both she's, better. I helped deliver her. She, she's standing there. She's just, like, she's walking away. She stops. Just falls to her knees. <laughs> And her face into the ground, and she's just, she's like done. She's just like lays there. Um, and he I'm walks shutting down now. He walks over and sits next to her, and he goes, "Well, you know, I'm really happy about this. Actually, you want to know why? Because uh, when I was growing up here in Emerald Hills, all I had was my mommy, and uh, I love her." But she made a lot of mistakes, and she was she was kind of sick a lot, so it was hard for her to take care of me. So sometimes it felt like I didn't even have one whole parent. And now you've got a dad, and you've got two moms. You've got a grandma. You've got your aunt. You've got your grandpa, and you've got Threnody, and maybe, hopefully soon, you'll have brothers and sisters, and you you don't know how happy that makes me, that you're going to have a big family. She just rolls over in defeat. <laughs> he reaches the... Dead, dead. Right. He, he, he sticks yeah, a punk out. Stopped working. He reaches out to tickle her belly. This is basically Lilo, and just leave me here to die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he reaches out and tickles her belly. She squams and laughs. Tickles harder. She's, she's trying to wiggle away from you. Chase. Oh no, the tickle monster. <laughs> And, uh, we, I mean, we can just say Clark keeps playing with her. Playtime I mean, of course. Ensues. Yes, I mean, of course, until it's time for him to, uh, head to the Chandry to, uh, get evaluated. I mean, Thren will have headed straight to the Chandry. Mm-hmm. So, we'll see his daughter first. Anyways. Yeah, she's trying to wiggle away from you. And you don't know where, like, she's reaching under a table, and you don't know from where, but she seems to get Bouncer Jr. How? D- okay, <laughs> sure. And she starts whacking you. <laughs> what? Hey! Whap, 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 whap. Stop! Stop! And Clark runs away. <laughs> she, she gets up and starts chasing you with the bat held up above her head. Hey! Ah, the towns have tabled. <laughs> Exit pursued by O'Reilly. 
<laughs> it's, a, it's a slightly better one too. Is like when you, as you're running away, she like trips and falls forward with the the bat still above her head. So she's laying there, <laughs> with like head first on the ground, bat still like held above her head, and her feet are still kicking. No. So she's just trying to push you across the ground. Still it's just chasing you. Scooting across the ground. Um, Clark uh, smiles, watches her for a second, then kind of tries to subtly head over to Sarah, and he goes, um, as much as I love hanging around here, something happened, and, uh, I gotta go get myself checked for some stuff. So, uh, so, yeah, um, let me know uh, if anything comes up or if there's anything I can do to make life better. Sure. Thanks. All right, Riley, Daddy's got to go. He's got a doctor's appointment, okay? She, she, when you say Daddy's got to go, she stops and looks at you really sad. And when you say doctor's appointment, she, like, alert. You know, uh, exclamation point above her head. Fleas. <laughs> um, okay. Hey, you know, if you're so nervous about doctors, why don't you want to protect Daddy from going to one, huh? You know, you're just running off, but you're not okay. trying to stop so, me. So you know how... <laughs> Sorry, Laura. So you know how, like, like as a, as a response, she might lean out from the doorway? Mm-hmm. Except it's Bouncer Jr. Oh my god! <laughs> and then it turns to face you, and it's got Google, angry googly eyes. Oh my god, does it? Yeah. She just no. shakes the bat and the eyes Google. Yes! And she's drawn little angry eyebrows on it. No! <laughs> Riley! She shakes it and it rattles. No! She has discovered the googly eyes. No! <laughs> Riley! <laughs> Oh, my child. <laughs> I love her. She, she, she proceeds, she proceeds, uh, she proceeds, uh, Bouncer Jr. She comes over to you. She looks at you dead seriously. Mm-hmm. She holds out her hand for your hand. He holds out his hand. She takes it and pulls it to her. All looks right. up at you. What's this mean? Super serious face. Okay. What'd she do? She nods and puts the box junior in your hand. Okay. So he can protect himself. He closes your hand. Clark squeezes it tightly. And he goes, okay. She puts a a hand on your arm. Looks at you. As as if she's like saying goodbye to her son who's going to war. (laughs) (laughs) Turns around. And slowly walks to the back. I'll, I'll bring this back when I'm safe, okay? She, her hand comes out from around the corner and she waves her handkerchief at you. You realize we're going to come home and find Riley just playing taps on the kazoo. I can't even. I can't. What if she had a kazoo? What was that? What if she had a kazoo? She she's got to have a kazoo, Hunter. <laughs> it, it's it may be the world's most annoying instrument, but she's got to have it. How dare you? Kazoos are precious. <laughs> they are. I do love them. Besides, Bugazelas are the world's most annoying. <laughs> what are they? Oh my goodness! You haven't heard of Bugazelas? No. Oh, goodness, they were sweeping the nation of... Smarty nose, smarty nose. Oh, yeah. They were sweeping the nation a few years back at the World Cup. Just, just... uh, Oh, all those giant trumpet things? That's the one. giant trumpet. Andrea knows as well. Oh, no, Andrea has heard of them. Sorry, Andrea. Yeah, I didn't know they were called Boobazelas. They're called Boobazelas. It's just a big plastic trumpet that just goes... Oh, like those kinds of things people take to football games? Yes, yes. That's oh, exactly what it is. They're not, oh. air, they're not air horns, but... They're not air horns. I'll find well, you. I'm not even... T- Hold on. 
I'll find you a video at some point. Okay, well, either way, I believe you. Okay. <laughs> the point is... Kazoos are blameless. Is, kazoos are, are... can do no wrong. Okay, understood. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, Clark is going to catch up to the, um, to the Chandry. Terribly sorry, oh, folks, no. but that's a lot of background noise. It's it's like someone's typing or tapping or. Yeah, I heard pretty loud typing. One sec. I don't hear it now. Just give me one moment, please. Hi, how do I sound? Better uh -huh. now. Yay! Yeah, turns out my uh, thing didn't plug in all the way, so apparently Skype oh, was going off my uh, onboard. the other mic. Yeah, that would explain Yeah, so when, I, when yeah. I'm looking up Boo Boo Zaylas... That, 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 that I don't know how to spell it, so I can't find them. I'll look it up after the game. Yeah, it's... Ooh. Okay, so... In the Chandry... You actually notice something immediately different as you're walking up to the Chandry. First thing you notice, it is remarkably more defensible. Yeah, I'm assuming um, this is Trinity getting there first. Yes, yes, yes. It's remarkably more defensible. There are bars on the windows. Um, there are uh, chest-high walls. The wall, the doors have been uh, reinforced. Um, there are extra covers and defenses around the Chandry. And then you see some, and that's the first thing you see. The second thing you see is that someone has taken the liberty of building a another room off of the Chandry <laughs> because they need more space. Threnody eyes the construction work to make sure that it's safe. It seems fine. She's gonna go in to the Chandry. It's the Chandry. It's chaotic. Of with people running back and forth, there's a lot of power lines and technologies. You're pretty sure someone has set up a Tesla coil somewhere. Uh, she is looking around for Wendy, Teddy, Belisarius, etc. Uh, so you're looking around, but she and... will, like the, it, when she sees people she knows, like namely the intern, she's going to clap them on the back and on the shoulder and sort of you know say hello, and she's glad to see them. Oh, yeah, should they hug you and whatnot? And actually, Wendy surprises you by hugging you. Uh, like, she sneaks up behind you and then hugs you. Oh. Tightly. Uh, the Threnody hugs really tight back. Hey. She's like, about time! Yeah, I missed you. They haven't been... Haven't been too many problems here, have there? Space. Yeah, I saw we are expanding. Belisarius' idea. Uh, he's getting pretty at home here, huh? And then he, like, leans out from, like, a doorway. No, it was Teddy's. Do not drag me into this. Was it actually Teddy's? Don't you blame me. <laughs> Ted, you pull Ted, me into your shit. You actually see, like, Teddy was, like, rounding a corner and sees you, and you say that, and he goes, uh... And backs away slowly. <laughs> Hey, I'm claustrophobic. More space is better as far as I'm concerned. He walks back into the room. <laughs> so, uh... Any developments I should know about from the lab, or... Or any enemies sighted? We haven't seen anything, and... Um... Oh, the that one guy, he seems to be doing better. I... Can't remember. Was this the guy who, um... God, this was ages ago. Um, what was the problem again? He found he found a like a room in the lab and like basically PTSD and that's, wasn't reacting to anything. That's right. That's right. Okay, so he's doing better. So Threnody's yeah. relieved to hear that. He's doing better. Uh, they've gotten a small reinforcement from the Alexandria because you mean Constantinople. You know, yeah, sorry, why did I say Alexandria? Constantinople. Mm -hmm. And Alexandria is the second city that they'll build in the future. Uh -huh. uh, Constantinople, uh, because uh, with the lab 
them pulling things out of the lab that can justify at least to everyone else, you know, that this is a thing that we should do. Uh, so they were able to get some more people wrapped up. So you're able to um, guard the town. Thren checks such. how they're doing for supplies, food rations, medical stuff. Um, food is usual. You know, you don't have enough that you're going to store, but um, you're always kind of on that precipice of, you know, if we go too long without something, something bad's going to happen. Yeah, okay. Uh, medical supplies is actually doing fine. Um, because they keep finding stuff. stuff under the lake, yeah. Yeah, yeah so they keep finding stuff. It's like, oh no, we're running out of medics. Oh, we found a cabinet full of medics. We'll be good for months. Um, Thren is going to uh, fill them in on what they found out uh the situation with Miss Cherries, what happened, exactly what has happened, basically, uh, since she last left, um, including, like, what happened to the radio tower, how they got it back up and running again, um, what the status is with everyone else, and um, what they've learned from Lazarus, including the uh, super mutant development. Oh, and by the way, has Teddy come... Like into the room, like is yes, he nearby? He gets a hug. He he hugs back. He gets hella hug. You you get the feeling so, that Freddy is possibly a little bit um, a little bit protective of these two at the moment. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Uh, so uh, yeah, so they're expanding and. Yeah, so they, Wendy says, uh, you know, if we could find a way to reverse super, uh, super mutant mutation, that'd be great, but I'd have no idea where to start. Well, potentially if we can find out how they've been turning them into super mutants, that would give us somewhere to start from. Yes! I just, um, these people did not sign up for this, I don't think. So, yeah. Oh, that reminds me, how is work on the, um, on the universal vaccine coming? Uh, going good. <laughs> um, we recently just had a breakthrough. Did and we? so, that's fantastic. Yes. So we're hoping to push things along soon. Great. Okay, you know, that's that's really. With everything good. else, it's kind of hit a side uh, back burner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's fair. Listen, is there anything I can do while I'm here? I mean, one of the things we really need to get sorted out is Clark. I I told you about what happened to him. We need to make sure he hasn't been programmed in any way. You get me? Yeah, uh, therapy? Whatever you think. I'm, I'm not sure of any machines that would help, so. I mean, the colander, maybe? Maybe, but that's more about viewing and transferring memories. Fair. Well, we'll figure something out. I know one or two folks here are, have a bit of speciality in that area. Yeah, we we have the we have the people. Yeah. And then Teddy's like, well, you could also do Good Wife and just counteract the things, but that's also got a danger to it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Also, do we need to detox him? Uh, possibly. Um, I've been treating him for his addictions. Uh, mostly, I've been trying to wean him off again, but I don't know. I mean, detoxing is always dangerous out in the wasteland because because of the limited resources, but we do have better resources now, so... We're doing well. Um, I mean, purified water's still kind of hard to get around to, but, I mean, it's yeah, not impossible. I imagine it's difficult to transport all the way from Constantinople, yeah. Oh, yeah, the water's heavy. Yeah, a little bit. The sooner we can get that elevator up and running, the better. Okay, um, well, Clark's visiting with Riley right now. He should be here at some point. Um, we'll talk to him about treatment uh, options. Cue Clark coming in. 
No, it's me. No, I'm fine with that. Yeah, sure. Oh. I heard my name. Hey, Clark. Um, we were trying to figure out the best options for treatment for you. Yeah. We're thinking uh, we might be in a position to detox you. Okay. Um, I suspect before we do that, though, uh, we should do any um, any deprogramming therapy that's necessary because that might require more use of good wife. And I believe you're that sounds good. Addicted to that. Um, <laughs> when Trinity finishes that sentence, Clark just kind of realizes what just happened and cringes a bit. Mm -hmm. So we'll get that out of the way, and then we will get you unaddicted. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Um, hey, uh, Nadira, and she just flags down one of the interns. Could you get Clark to one of the treatment rooms and get him prepped, please? Can I just say I love love how you have all the interns' names and just know them by heart. Yeah. I it's, love it too. It's awesome. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yes, yeah, she, you know, they do so. Uh, she. She. Okay, she does so. I didn't want to assume. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, everything seems to be going fine. Um, before Threnody goes to uh, help with Clark, she does kind of lean into Wendy and Teddy and go. Um, how's Belle been holding up? Stressed, but he's always stressed. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Um, he, uh... He, um... I didn't notice that he seems to be a little more... N not off his game? In fact, he seems more focused since he was... Since this whole thing started, but you know, something's just different about him. He seems to always have something on his mind. He's, um. I have reason to believe he's in particular danger. Hmm. And he hasn't. I mean, he's been through some shit. I know this. He used to be Legion after all, but I don't know if he's been through exactly what we have. So. Look out for him, would you? Of course. Thanks. I mean, obviously, if I have my way, none of us are going through any of that shit ever again, but... <sighs> anyway, I should go check on Clark. Um, as Clark is going, he's just like, Can, can, I, can I have my... Can I have Oswin to hold my hand, please? <laughs> Um, Threnody will go to the lake to see if Oswin can come with her. She will arrive and say, um, Oswin, you have uh, a muffin requesting your attention. <laughs> muffin. Muffin button. <laughs> so, uh, you, yeah, actually, as you come back to the Chandry, are you coming back to the Chandry, or do you have other plans? She gathers the animal and heads with Thren. Okay, so Thren's going back to the Chandra. Uh With Oswin and her animals, yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, as you walk in, you hear a loud zap. And Sean goes, oh my god, are you alright? Um, Thren runs toward the sound. <laughs> you find Alphonse laying on the ground. His entire trench coat is smoking. And he goes, he just puts up a thumb, I'm alright. Okay. What? No us. What? He, he slowly gets up. She looks around. Did someone, like, accidentally taser Alphonse or something? He's, he's like, ten feet away from a Tesla coil. <laughs> okay, I'm good. Alphonse, I I'm probably should have said this to start taser. with, but don't touch anything. <laughs> Figure that, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed. I'm, a, I'm just be over here. <laughs> and Oswin, he goes back into, like, the main room. Oswin goes to her muffin. Um, yeah, uh, Threnody will also, you know, let Wendy and Teddy know about um, their their recent additions. Like, yeah, we rescued this guy. Oh, and fuck, Ce Cecil as well. Yeah. I'm assuming that Claire oh, yeah. has brought Cecil to the Chandry. She's still with Cecil, like, yeah. 
she's pretty much just made a like she has gone full big system mode. She has made him a little bed. Osmond says into her earpiece thread, it might be a good idea to keep him out of the chandry. And Trinity just kind of looks around and is like, like looks at all, all the interns, all the Empire soldiers, all the tech, and kind of goes, you might be right. He's actually like uh, super, like, like he's like, like walking, he seems fine. He just got zapped and he seems fine, but he's walking back to the, the main, like, area with all the carts, uh, and then he, like, yeah. looks around and goes, see something in another room, goes, oh, and he starts walking towards that. Oh, no. shiny. Oh, silence! <laughs> Trinity lets Oswin head yes. on towards, yeah, Tr Oswin is going to her muffin, uh, has gone to Clark. <laughs> Trinity lets her go ahead, just kind of casually diverts and just kind of grabs Alphonse by the elbow and starts walking alongside him and guiding him away from where he was going. Straight, he's going. He's going into the corridor room. It's a straight U-turn out of there. It's like, there we go, this way. <laughs> she yep, basically just way. kind of walks him in the direction of the door and says, "You know, Alphonse, you look like you could possibly use a stiff drink. Sarah, the green mile could probably hook you up with something strong." Uh, oh, one sec, because I actually have his favorite drinks listed. Because he is a he is a heavy drinker, actually. I just can't still remember. What are these? Oh, that explains a lot of things, actually. Uh, yeah, he 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 says like uh, he says like you know yeah I could uh, I could go for uh, something. Why don't you why don't you enjoy me when you get a chance? Uh, if I have the time, I certainly will. Oh, and watch out for the three-year-old with the bat. <laughs> he if, looks confused Clark, for a moment. If Clark can hear this, um, I understand if he can't. Uh, if he can hear this, though, he's just like, oh, she gave me her bat. Look out for the three year old with an improvised weapon. Look out for the three year old. Yeah, she. she I can just imagine the bat. Claire saying that in passing. <laughs> she, she gave me the bat to defend myself against the doctors. Thrandy just shakes her head. And I, I helped deliver her the ingrate. <laughs> She'll learn. Yeah, she's right. still back at the car with Cecil. Um, Thrandy is going to push some, some caps into Alphonse's hand so he can buy himself a drink and says, uh, say hi to Sarah for me, I'll catch up with you later. He still has his, like, uh, duffel bag, like, over his shoulder and he looks down at the caps and goes, thanks, I, uh, he pauses. I actually forgot I gotta grab some on my way out. <laughs> Thanks, I'll go get a whiskey. She uh, just gives him a thumbs up and heads back towards Clark and Oswin. Hi. Um, Clark snuggles with Oswin. <laughs> just big just the, the, the Lilo and Stitch. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but I imagine that he has pets all over him at this point. Kevin on his head, Axel sprawled across his chest, the baby bear clinging to his leg. Just kind of, we Kev have to protect him, yes? Kevin like, is on his head. Like, our mother wants to protect it. him, so we should help protect him. An amalgamation of man and pet. I don't, I don't know why they, she wants to protect him, but she does, so we will. <laughs> What's important is that she's happy. Yes. Um, yes, so... Threnody basically wants to deprogram whatever was programmed into him while he was in his hypnotic... Uh, when he was in his hypnotic trance. So... Mixture of... Good wife and hypnotism, maybe? Okay, so... Clock... Yeah. Roll me a will save. Minus, uh, okay. Hmm. Minus 50. Oh. Eh, yeah, let's say minus 40. Oh, damn it. Hold on. It's, uh, taking a second. Uh-huh. That's a pass. Hey, wow. Okay. Nice. Cool. Um, okay, you're gonna basically be deprogrammed. Mm-hmm. 
She fell, had my reroll. Yeah, but destroy all the rerolls at this. Basically, yeah, we do not want this to fuck us over anymore, especially we don't want it to fuck Clark over anymore. Mm. Clark's been through enough. Yep. Um. So, yeah, uh, um, I'm assuming that treatment takes a while. Yes, it's going to take a little while. And Asmund will be snuggling with him. Um, basically, yeah. I mean, Threnody also wants to run detox on him, but she wants to let him recover from this first. So she's going to leave him and Oswin be for now and just ask Nadira to sort of monitor them and just kind of check in on them from time to time. Will do. Is, is Oswin going to stick by his side the entire time? It Oswin. I, I would be surprised if not, but... Give I mean, yeah, uh, <laughs> so okay, well done. Kind of well done. <laughs> I, mean, it might, I mean, if it's gonna be some time, right? You might wanna. Actually, you know what? Since you go and train your, with your pets, um, roll a loyalty for whatever pet you want to increase the loyalty for. I'm gonna think, Kevin boy. Kevin. It can be. It can be anyone. I think Kevin's the only one that's really like low enough to warrant doing it, though. I would have thought that Kevin's loyalty would have gone up. They saved Clark together. Yeah, yeah, but his the like loyalty experience. was really low in the first place. Uh, what do you roll? What does she roll for loyalty? It's a D one hundred. And then you got to get below the loyalty. I believe his is like a twelve or fifteen. Ugh. Nice. <laughs> That's a crit right there. Nice. Nice. Kevin cool, will now die go for you. It's gonna go way up. He's like way more um, saving clock. If it's about saving clock, he's way more accepting about it. I don't understand. Social link, go. <laughs> I love how you just it confounds you why this is a thing. I love it. Okay, so. <sighs> Okay, so um, it's probably going to take a day to recover from the therapy. Um, does anyone want to do anything while that happens? Um, Thren... I mean, I'm still with Cecil. Yeah, Thren will Cecil. have um, assigned one of the interns, let's say Ace, to uh, look after Cecil and like make sure he's okay. I mean, she's still with him in the car. She hasn't bothered to do anything until he's woken up. I mean, you... He will have woken up right now. Yeah, he's would, have, he would have woken up because it was, it was a three-day ride and he's not going to sleep for three yeah. days straight. I suppose she just wanted to have a chat with him when he wakes up. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, when he wakes up, do you want to, like, have that happen before Claire takes him into the Chandry? Well, just pretty much just have a chat with him as he wakes up and just then just sort of take him in and have a chat there and just do stuff with him. Oh, um, real quick, uh, Andrea says, if at any point Clark needs space, Oswin will find a place close by to play slash train the pets. As for the egg, I'm assuming that that's still being incubated in the cart? Uh, I, would Oswin have taken it with her inside? See, that's, that's what I'm asking. Like, I mean, it's one up thing when we're... Oh, yep, yeah, up to Andrea, of course. I need to come up with a way to do a thing. Also, would have brought it okay. with her. Okay. Oh, one sec. Um, I'm going to say, by the way, that like Threnody will mostly be trusting Claire with um, Cecil, since Claire is pretty good with kids, but she will kind of have assigned Ace to kind of be on call for if Cecil needs any medical attention. Okay, I'm back. Okay. Uh... Okay, so yes. Uh, what was the conversation you wanted to have with Cecil? Have a chat with him, catch him up on stuff, and just, just have a chat with him. Essentially, and just sort of go from there. I have things in my head. I just don't know how to properly get there. Get there. Without just forcing it. Oh, this is gonna be sad. Oh yeah, no, there are, there will be feels. Uh, okay. Uh, 
Let me. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, this Buckle is gonna be sad because I kind of going on the field strip. Because I know what he's gonna say, which is even sadder. Ugh. Because. Uh, how old did I say Sissel was? Three. Okay. Three. Three. Three or four. Three or four. Yeah. Definitely not ten. So he... Definitely not ten. No, I was miles away. <laughs> yeah, but he can talk. Yeah. Uh, he just. He Why can't talk. Riley? <laughs> She can. She just presumably chooses not to. Because it's fu- it's funnier that way. <laughs> Silent but deadly. Rule rule of funny. Right? So you can do anything she wants as long as it's funny, and her not talking is funny. So, um, so how do you? I mean, this this is in your court, Smarty. However, so, you want to do this. I mean, once she got into the car, she basically just made a bed for him out of clothes. Just does, like there's does, probably like some shouts for uh, uh, um, I've forgotten the name. I'm looking at it right now. Um, mattress. There we go. Just Smarty. like some shouts. Yeah. Smarty, is the what? Trixie cape his blanket? Yes. Good. I mean, is I was going to make pillow. No, the the pillow is uh. Like just a bunch of bundled up shirts, and the mattress is just like it's pretty much just majority is just uh shirts. There's like a shirt mattress, a shirt pillow, and then her cape over it is a blanket, and she's just sitting there just uh watching him, watching over him. Grenady has temporarily loaned him Teddy Jr. Uh, sorry, he has both of them. <laughs> He's been loaned Teddy and Wendy Jr. Well, he got three of them then. Oh, that's right. I forgot Claire had. Of course, Claire has one. So she's just looking, watching over him. She looks very tired. Has she slept at all in three days? Oh. No. Of course not. <laughs> like, even. Even for, like, a military Terry trained sniper, she is very tired. Yeah, no, you're not, you are not physically meant to not sleep for three days. She's, she's good for, like, a day, a day and a half. Two days is pushing it. Three days, even she doesn't know why she's still awake. Big sister. Just sheer determination and will to protect this child. She's just watching over him, and uh, I certainly he's probably going to wake up at some point. Yeah, so he wakes up. Um, he's just going to like snuggle down into the clothes. She was just sort of just doing that sort of thousand yard stare off into just the distance, and then she just sort of catches him both in the corner of her eye and looks back to him. And just as soon as he's waking up, he's like, you right? You're right? You're up? She's, as she is very tired, she's also very quiet. Uh, he, he just, like, grumbles. She just sort of gives a slight chuckle and just sort of leans over and just gently gives him a prod. You like swats away at your hand. You have a good sleep. He he puts his head under the pillow. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know that. Okay, then. Five more minutes, huh? He like waves you off. <laughs> Well, just wait. If if I could sleep that long, I would. But you gotta get up at some point. He shakes his head. No. Well, what about if I give you some sugar bombs? She just sort of shakes the packet. 
I imagine it's like Scooby Doo. He's just like, ah. <laughs> mm. Or some snack cakes, or. Would you do it for a Cecil snack? <laughs> oh my god, a Cecil snack would be a snack cake, like, like, <laughs> like, coated with like the crumbs of a sugar bomb. Well, clearly, it's a snack cake cut open and made into a sugar bomb sandwich. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, what else have you got? It's just the sound of just boxes and glass being moved around. She's basically just digging through her own snack pile. Roll me perception. It's fine. He's like three. Those are all his baby teeth and they're going to fall out anyway. Yep. <laughs> That's how it works, right? That's totally how it works. Wow! <laughs> so, she is uh, very tired. <laughs> yeah, but you rolled a natural two, but I rolled a nat one. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so, so as you're, like, fiddling around the stuff, he, like, gets up and reaches over for the box of uh, sugar bombs that you left, like, beside you. And he's, like, looking up at you as he does so. So he doesn't realize when he's already, like, got a hold of it. And it's, like, above him, technically, because he's laying down on the bottom of the cart. And he grabs it, and it tilts, and the whole thing just spills on top of him. <laughs> and I... <laughs> she sort of laughs. But it's that kind of half-assed, I'm just very tired laugh. And she's like, well, I, I guess that's the one way to feed yourself. You're up now. He sits up and is trying to, like, wipe himself of sugar crystals and yellow food coloring. Number nine. <laughs> Number nine. She's just, like, takes one of those shirts that was uh, as the mattress and she sort of tries to wipe it, wipe him down. There you go. <laughs> Got it all over you. You're going to be sparkling like a Nuka Cola in the morning. Uh, yeah, you may notice that we're not uh, we're not at the place anymore we are in a moving car there's a good reason for that and I will tell you it as soon as my tired mind remembers it that, uh, yeah, that, it was long story short it's a bad place. Like I could get into it, but I don't. I don't really want to right now. <laughs> but yeah, it's a it's a bad. Maybe she goes and takes one of the snack cakes away from you. <laughs> she just doesn't mind if he if he wants to feed himself. He can. She's just... gonna gorge himself on sugary snacks. Yeah, she don't. She don't care. This child is going to vomit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, she'll, he, she'll he just stop like... him if he's just actually stopping himself. But if he's just grabbing like one and just munching on it, but... no, he's like eating. He's eating it, and then he looks up at you. He takes another one and he starts eating it. He's eating it well. He's he, you know eating it regularly. He's not like stuffing it in his face, but mm. at that point, he like, looks up to you. He kind of like waits for a moment and picks up some of the sugar bombs and starts like nomming on those. Yeah, I and, and then that. he gets a third snack cake and he starts eating. He's like looking at hey, hey, <laughs> and he like, threw a mouthful of like like crumbs. He's like, Dad, you're not gonna do those. Yeah, about uh, um, is a. Uh... How do I put this? Your dad's, um... 
He's gone away for a bit. For a while. He's off to do, um, you know, dad things. Sell drugs. Yeah. And, uh, he essentially, uh, I would I wouldn't really want to call it your babysitter because that makes me sound grumpy and a bad person. I'm not really your babysitter. I'm I'm Well, I'm awesome for one and uh um I'm looking after you while your dad goes off and does dad things. Uh-huh. And we can, uh... I say we because there's more than just me. There's, uh... There's people downstairs. I say downstairs as if we're actually in a building. Um, there's people on the other side of this floor that are uh, also with me. They're all probably asleep. I, I really should be asleep as well, but I, I'm not. Don't don't follow my example. You will be really exhausted. So when's that coming back? <sighs> um, not for a while. Not uh-huh. for a very long time. Why? He's, uh... God, I don't know how to tell this to a child, but... Tell oh, what? You're gonna then... He's... Not coming back for a good Ever. while. Ever. Uh, do you... Am I, am I making a bigger deal out of this than you already know? Hmm. Like, this is a big deal, and I don't know how much of a big deal to make this because I don't know He's how... He's gotten up at this point. Yeah, I think And, it and he's just letting you ramble. <sighs> he's I taken... Know. He's taken the, um... The, the pillow that he had and he set it off, like, on the... Ne- like, r- roughly next to you. Like, down a ways a little bit. Mm. He's got... And he's gotten the... Trixie cape. Uh... And he's just letting you ramble. I don't know how how smart are you, kid? Dad says I'm pretty smart. Well, yeah. So your dad's not coming back, like ever. He um. He's he's uh he he's he's. Taking your hand at this point. Mm-hmm. And he's just kind of like gently like pushing on your shoulder to get you to lay down. I mean, she's already just kind of leant right back against the, uh, like the little guard, I suppose, on top of the car. She's just leant right back on it. She can't really support much of herself while she's this tired. Yeah, she, he's trying to push you down to get you laying down so your head is on the pillow that he's put next to you. You just sort of give a slight chuckle and just sort of lay down and just lay, put her hands behind her head and just lay down and look up at the sky. <laughs> he throws the cape over you. Yeah, 
Yeah, I do need to sleep, but not right now. I need to... Like, a long time ago, when I was, well, older than you are now, I had a very traumatic experience. It took me a long time to get over it. And I don't know how mature and well you'll take it, if you'll take it as well as I did. If something as bad happened to you. Mm. She's not much help. Yeah, she's she's trying to gauge how mature this kid is without you, actually just. You want to roll insight? Yeah. Roll insight. I'm gonna give you a slight penalty because you've been awake for three days. <laughs> That's fair enough. Oh, 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 oh. Well, <laughs> she wow. has no idea. She is wow. so fucking tired. Wow. No, wow. <laughs> You're in the negatives. Would you like my reroll, Smarty? <laughs> I mean, sure. Oh. If you want. <sighs> okay, um, it's loading. Twelve. Um, I guess you're kind of getting that, you know, he kind of understands. Maybe. He knows where I'm trying to get to, but not what I'm trying to say. Probably. Uh, well, you know, it's, a, it's like a bandage. Alright, so, so this is. It's just gonna suck, and. You're most undoubtedly going to be very upset, and. Uh, I just want to tell you that. If. If. When. You want to cry or get upset or get angry or however the hell you're going to take this. Don't. He's just don't looking say. at you. He's just looking at you like, like come on. I'm, I'm here for you. So, so your dad's dead. I know. Oh, thank God. I made this a much bigger deal than it had to be, didn't I? <laughs> Uh, she just sort of gives another sort of half-assed playful laugh and just sort of gives him a playful push and went, you did that on purpose didn't you he sits down next to you <laughs> he's like what, was it? what else was I supposed to do uh, I don't know my God. You took I've that seen, a lot better than I did. I've seen Dad's clientele. It was only a matter of time, huh? Mm. Uh, maybe draw that out on a lot longer than I needed it to. Dad always said don't sugarcoat things. Oh, good. See, most kids, they're a bit, they're not like, you know, as they haven't seen as much shit as you do. Have. They they need a bit of sugar coating every now and then. God. Of course, if I'd, if I'd drawn that out any longer, I would have had to break out the great and powerful tricks and you wouldn't have wanted that. Too much cheese. Yeah, she does. She is a bit full of herself. He 
puts a hand on his face. <laughs> right, well, that, well, that's out of the way. Um, do you have any plans to go back to sleep? He picks up another snack cake and eats it. All right, don't, don't make yourself sick or you know all of that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass out. Okay. And then she's just gonna sort of give him a roughly his hair. And then you're a very good kid. And then she's just gonna just pass out there and there. <laughs> the last thing you hear before you pass out is the clinking of glass. <laughs> and someone in your adult brain, you know, he's gotten it to the to the Nuka Cola. He's drinking me Nuka Cola. At this point, she's too tired to care. <laughs> yeah, at that point, she would have just... Like, usually it would take her a while, even when she's tired, it would take her a while to fall asleep now. As soon as she shuts her eyes, she's gone. <sighs> and when, when she gets You're going to wake up, this kid's going to have eaten and drinking his way into a sugar coma. <laughs> There's just a few, like, there's just a couple of empty bottles and boxes just surrounding him. He's holding a half-empty thing of Nuka-Cola. There's sprinkles all over his mouth. <laughs> his face is covered in, like, white sugar powder. He's got the Cheeto fingers. Oh, my God. There's not even a Cheeto analog in Fallout. Yeah, but you know what I mean. What needs to be, though? What would they be called? Oh, God knows. Okay, so... Yeah, that went... <sighs> yeah, um... Once I get a... Get him to the changer. She's just if he's asleep, she's just gonna nudge him. Oh yeah! By the way, when you when you when you wake up and he is like eating himself sick, he's like laying on the laying down like. Uh, <laughs> she sort of leans uh, up, goes over to him, and just sort of, not in a very kind of strict tone but in a very big sisterly way she's like what was the last thing I said to you before I passed out drink the Nuka Cola and he holds before, up a Nuka he holds up a blue Nuka Cola before that I remember don't uh... don't make yourself sick and what did you do uh, yeah, that's what he, I thought. He weekly throws a plastic wrapper at you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, yeah. So this is going to follow around Claire for the rest of forever. Yeah, this is this is my little brother now. Clark gets yeah. a little sister, Claire gets a little brother. <laughs> <laughs> what was the one thing I told you not to do? Raise the dead. What did you do? Raise the dead. <laughs> I love that line so much. So yeah, once I get to the Chandra, she's just gonna nudge him if he's asleep or yeah, uh, just indicate for him to hop out if uh, he's awake. Where are you going? Because wherever you're going, he's following. Oh, probably, uh, into the, probably just, uh, off into the change room. Okay. It's like, yes, hello, this is my little brother now. <laughs> I have adopted him. Like I said, Threnody will have pulled one of the interns, um, ace to one side and kind of said, you remember Saren's kid, he recently lost his dad, please keep an eye out for him and if he needs anything. Yeah, he's just gonna follow on Claire. Now, I don't think this will ever come up, but um, 
Uh, because just because you're not gonna like do that much with him beyond this, at least I think. He has this weird idea about how like parentship works. Uh, now, because he 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 believes that whenever your current parent passes on, it's whoever's willing to take you up that just like you know who's next, who's next in line. Yes, hello, I am your mom now. Okay, <laughs> and so he's just like oh, yeah, and he just follows them. Like he doesn't even question it. So yes, you all in the change me. Um, clock. What are you... You're resting up. And covered in animals. Yep, and covered in animals. Oswald's with you. Thren is... Checking on Belle. Belle. Ah, yes, Belle. Okay, um... Belle is in a room that has been converted into... I'm gonna say it's probably like a walk-in closet uh, or storage area. Okay, but it's big enough that Thren can be in there, right? Uh, yeah, it's gonna have to be big enough because uh, he is converted into a small armory. Of course he has. You know, Thren, if Thren was... actually walks in, looks around, and just kind of says, "Of course you did." <laughs> he has. He actually has a clipboard in hand, and he's like counting. He's counting thing. He's like, he's like twenty six, twenty seven. Oh, Thren! Uh, Sorry, fuck, where was I? I didn't mean to make you lose count. One, two, three, four, five. Well, wow. <laughs> he's going uh, to patiently wait for him to finish counting. She's actually going to, just as she passes by, she's like twelve. Eight. Thirty-nine, Claire. Thirty-nine. Forty. Damn it, Claire. You write down thirty. He writes down 39 very, like, angrily. He <laughs> circles it. it. He unli- underlines it. He suckles it. Thren just raises her eyebrow. Did you miss us? Yes! He just does a very shitty finger in as she uh, walks away from the doorway. Hey, Claire, I got you something. Mm? Yeah, you're going to turn around and look? Yeah, you get hit in the face with a stuffed big horn, like a, a little plushy big horn. <laughs> he just just like picks it up and just chucks it at you. <laughs> just a howl, is it? Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna roll to see how well he throws it. I probably shouldn't have done that because it's gonna take a while to pop in, but yeah. Uh, so that happens, and then uh, oh, never mind. No, it doesn't. He throws it and kind of goes wide. Throws it and she just sort of catches it in mid air. Thren blinks. Claire gets a present? I want a present. This is mine now. I want a present. Uh, he like he looks at Thren and he's like he's like uh uh and then Clark says that and he like turns around and goes, uh uh <laughs> That backfired on you, didn't it? Oh, Shut my... Up. <laughs> oh my god, Belle, I'm kidding, it's fine. Yeah, but I don't think I'm Clark not... is. Yeah, there it is. He's like patting himself down, like, what do I have? Uh, Clark's a big boy, he'll be fine. <laughs> Oswin says, I'm okay with no present. I think you un- you overestimate me, Claire. I mean, Thren. <laughs> you overestimate my powers. <sighs> he's like, yeah, he's like patting himself down, trying to think of something to give to Clark. Throwing a pants on him. I'm tempted. He's gonna he's gonna hold on a finger. Hold on, I'll be right with you, Thren. He walks away. Do you have a belt? Oh yes! He, oh he walks God. away. He just takes his belt off and throws it at Clark. Yeah, Clark. <laughs> like, he clearly he clearly needs a belt. I, this isn't what I was hoping for. We clearly need it. I swear to God, if that belt becomes like becomes a Chekhov's gun, <laughs> watch she uses it as a tourniquet later. <laughs> yeah. No, no, like like you need an extra like three feet to like climb up to this thing, and so you use the belt as like a grappling hook to swing it over and get that extra three feet. 
Ah, uh, you see, but I couldn't lose my patch because I had the belt on. Uh, okay, so... Uh, you see, Your Honor, it couldn't have been me who took off his pants that quickly because I had a belt on, and I, I couldn't have done it that quickly with the belt on. Flawless logic. Belt at the time. Flawless. Case closed. So, yes, uh, uh, Belisarius comes back in and uh, sees you, Fred, you... and is... How are you holding up, Commander? Another day. Wendy and Teddy say you've been pretty stressed lately. I'm always stressed. Have you ever not been? He pauses for a moment. Yes. That was a long time ago. I was gonna say, is that before Legion? No. Good, because if that were the case, the last time you would have been not stressed would have been, what, the age of five? Something along when, those lines. That's when you joined, right? Yeah. Anything else anyway. To, anything I can help with? Oh, we're just preparing, you know. Better yeah. have it, not need it. Need it, not have it. Mm. I really hope you don't need it. Strangely enough, I think we're missing a machete. What? Yeah. Uh, where did you last see it? We have like 20, I don't know. <laughs> Technically, we have 19 now, but we had 20. I don't know where it went. Well, and Clark... as much as one machete isn't an issue, I still want to know where it is. Clark might have palmed it. I'll check with him later. It's hiding the whole machete in his pants. Sorry? It's like, I don't have a machete. What's that in your pants? How the hell? Sorry. Okay. Um. Well, I mean, you guys seem to have done a good job of fortifying the place. I'm feeling a lot better about your chances right now. Yeah, if they attack the Chandra, we'll be prepared. Yeah. Um, Chandra is actually a fallback point, so it's, it's completely, it's incredibly defensible. So what's your, what's it your fallback from? Uh, the town. There's a lot of town. We don't want them to get into the town in the first place. Yeah, that makes sense. And the citizens of Emerald Hills, they can fall back into the Chandra if it gets, if the town gets attacked. Exactly. Gotcha. We can hold them off until everyone's in Chandry, and then we can fall back to the Chandry. Okay. Don't worry, it's fine. So I'm on first rodeo. Uh, I... I'm not sure if you've faced anything quite like this before. No, but I'm pretty sure I've worked for a man somewhat like this before. Caesar? I mean, every monster is, you know, different, but, you know, all kind of from some same mold. Yeah, I suppose so. How are you holding up? Not great. I can imagine. I'm really fucking sorry that I painted a target on your back. Wouldn't be the first time. Or not you. An officer's mother. He. Uh, you haven't hit a sore spot, but you definitely brought something up, uh, and he's like, "Yeah." Do you want to talk about it, or? I had been wondering, but. I don't want to make you uncomfortable. I kind of get the feeling you loved her a lot. Yeah. Sh should I? Should I go? Should I leave you be? No. I like that you're here. 
that's that's nice to know. Is is she why you left? Yeah, that's what she wanted. She um. I mean, she can't have been Legion. Legion doesn't accept women. She was a um, she was a slave. Thren looks midway between upset and angry. I believe there's a word for that, but I can't recall off the top of my head. Anyway. What do you say? Anyway. Um, how long you stand? Uh, well, um, we need to get if we've, we've had Clark looked at, um, we need to get him detoxed, we all need to figure out what's happening with Cecil, uh, maybe another day? Okay. Could you have it back for at least some time? Yeah. Once it starts, it's, uh, it's not gonna end. No. I wouldn't have. If I'd known, I wouldn't have. If I'd known you'd find out, I wouldn't have put you in danger like that. But you couldn't have known. So don't beat yourself up over it. Oh. I wish I could have been someone who was actually worth it. Out of character. I missed that. She said, I wish I could have been someone who was actually worth it. Look, I, I know, okay, I'm... You've seen shit, you've been in love, you have a kid, and this... 25-year-old fuck-up who's still... figuring everything out. You deserve better. A 25-year-old woman who saved more lives than I can count. A 25-year-old woman that's constantly put other people before her. A 25-year-old woman who set everything aside to help a, a group of yahoos that you didn't know so they wouldn't go off and kill themselves because of something. Yeah. <laughs> you might be fucked up, but you're my fuck. <laughs> who is that? Yes. Smarty. Yeah. You're kind of an idiot when you put it like that, huh? She smirks. Yeah, but you're my idiot. Uh, she looks down. Just kind of sheepish. I, um... Don't look, don't look down. I had your pretty face. She looks up. There we go. You're just trying to embarrass me now. Uh, well, I'm succeeding, so yes. Uh, I ship it. It was already shipped, Smarty. The ship may have sailed already. I'm not sure. Ship in order. <laughs> like before, it was just like a, a Type Two ship. Now it's like a Type Three cruiser. Um, I, um, I, I, I said I'd meet, uh, Alphonse, I don't think you saw him, we, um, we rescued him from the Lazarus Labs, uh, I said I'd meet him in the Green Mile, do you want to come with, take a load off? He looks around, he's down as a clipboard. And it sets off to the side. Sure. Cool. Um, Thren will head to the Green Mile. Uh, Belisarius follows. Cool. Uh, I'm not sure if I've candid it before, but I'm going to say that Belisarius is a lightweight. Good. <laughs> because he's from the Legion, and they don't drink. They don't drink. Okay. Yep. 
So he's not used to drinking, so <laughs> he doesn't know his own limits. Thren will keep an eye on him. Uh, Alphonse is already there. He's already ordered a a, 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 a whiskey. Um, Thren will order a gin, and she'll just kind of be nursing that for a while. Yeah, I guess she's just going to shoot the breeze with those two, and um, that's how she'll be spending the evening. Yay. Uh... Couple shots in, Belisarius is out. Like he's like he gets pretty sloppy drunk, and then he's just gonna pass out of the bar, which is funny because then he has some of his subordinates that are taking their leave in the same bar. <laughs> like the captain's getting drunk. Yeah. Captain's getting wasted. Yeah. Yeah. Trendy does just have a moment of just kind of face palming. At one point. At one point. Um. Uh, Sarah, like, puts down five shots in front of him. And she's just like, they're paid for. <laughs> and he, like, looks down at him, and, like, his supporters are going, Chuck, 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 Chuck. They and then someone, again, someone realizes the mistake, goes, shots, shots, oh, yeah, shots, 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 shots. And Belisarius is already kind of drunk, so he just takes them all. Trinity's just Can like, die. why, why you do this? <laughs> The devious plan to get him drunk. Day off, yeah. No, they they still have a lot of work to do. <laughs> but they're not gonna pass up an opportunity like this. Um, after a while, uh, um, Alphonse seems to be able to hold his liquor pretty well. Um, he start he starts sh- singing shanties. After a while. Um, just, is there anything in particular you talk about? Um, catching Alphonse up on the situation, um, catching Belle up on the situation, introducing them to each other, explaining to Alphonse that he's not usually this drunk, etc. Belisarius, not being passed out of the, this point, will like put an elbow down on the table and point with his one finger up, like he's like, and he's super serious, like he's gonna say something. And he goes. Fair. She just pats him on the shoulder. <laughs> but yeah, just um, n- nothing in particular. Just getting everyone up to speed and shooting the breeze a bit. Cool. Another I had a shinking song. Uh, okay, so let's see. Yeah, um, everything seems fine. You know. A uh, Belisarius drinks himself unconscious. Uh, Alphonse drinks a bit and holds his liquor. He sings. Keep an eye on anything. Alphonse doesn't really have anything else to tell you about the place. Uh, unless I can think of something. Which I don't think so. Um, yeah, and Sarah keeps the uh, drinks coming. Also, every once in a while... Someone gets hit with a with a um a stuffed rabbit on a stick. Riley? <laughs> yes. Um Threnody will at some point um give Riley snuggles if if Riley wants them. <laughs> she she accepts for a moment and then much like a cat tries to wiggle away, <laughs> bapping you on the head with a stuffed bunny. She just ruffles her hair and lets her go. She goes running it off. Yep. Um, Thren oh, will... at one point, yeah. at one point, because um, you three are sitting together, um, and presumably you're sitting in the middle. Mm-hmm. Uh, Riley gets up on the bar stool next to Alphonse, turns and looks at him, and squints like like she's like, hmm, sizing him up. Hmm. Riley, this is a pine cone. Hi. By the way, what's with pine cone? Evergreen. Oh, yeah, you said that before. Yes, that's right. She, like, she like raises an eyebrow questioningly at you two. What? I don't know. Alphonse shrugs. What do you think, I don't Ra- speak three-year-old. What do you think, Riles? Can we trust this guy? She pusses her lips, turns in a stool, gets off, and backs away. 
Keeping her eyes on Alphonse and then goes into the back room. I think she thinks we ought to keep an eye on you. I wasn't planning on leaving, so you know, that'd be easy. Mm-hmm. After about a minute. Um, after about a minute, uh, she comes out with something behind her back. Comes back up to the same seat, gets into the stool, turns to face Alphonse. And she then, like, dramatically points at the other end of the bar. He's like, the fuck? He looks. She knocks his hat off. And and then puts another hat on, to- on his head instead. And it looks like she's constructed the top of a, a pine cone tree and put it on his head. Um, Trinity just grins widely and then puts Alphonse's hat on Riley. It is like it is bigger than her head, so it like slips below her eyes. She adjusts <laughs> Which... it. She adjusts it so that it's leaning back on her head, so she can still see. She looks up at it. She gets off her stool, goes into the back, and now Fon's like looking up at his new hat, and then goes and like it has like, pine like air quotes pine needles hanging down around his face, and he's like, I'm. I'm not sure. Do I look good? Eh. Am I? He like takes off the hat, runs. He like combs his hair down, puts it back on. Suits is about as much as the other one did. No, actually, actually, I think this. I think I might stand out more in the wasteland now. <laughs> wow, more than wearing a trench coat and a fedora. In yellow. I remember yellow. Yellow is very important. Of course. Yes. And at which point, <laughs> and Riley comes out wearing a coat that's two sizes too big for her. So it, like covers her most almost all the way down to like her ankles, and there's a bright yellow raincoat. She's tied it around her in like a detective style, like a PI, uh, like a, 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 a noir PI detective, and she has the hat like really far down, and she has a lollipop pop in her mouth so it looks like she's smoking a cigar and the leaves are really too long for her oh no look what you did <laughs> Alphonse looks it's not my fault she's the one that gave me the hat you're the one that put it on her Riley come here baby she she gives you a look like a hard boiled cop it goes up to one, to a a, a, a a booth and it is like somehow gotten hold of a notepad and a pencil and is like watching peep the people at the booth and is writing things down. Throaty just massages her temple. I am clearly not drunk enough for this. I'll drink to that. <laughs> and he orders you both two more shots. Thren will drink more. Yep. He Alphonse actually does something interesting. He orders a whiskey Mm. And a bottle of pure water. Of purified water. Okay. And pours drops of the water into the whiskey. You before dilute? drinking. You dilute? No. I mean, he's like literally putting like two or three drops and then drinking it before. And he's not dilute, diluting it. It's not enough to dilute it. That's right. raises an eyebrow. What's the deal with that? Chemical reaction. Uh, does Threnody know what he's talking about? Uh, roll science. Okay. Let's remember what my science is. Scroll down. Oh my god, Riley's monologuing in her head in the standard noir fashion. It was a rainy day. It's a cool dark day in the bar. <laughs> Man walks in. No idea who he is. <laughs> when she had to work in. She had legs up to here, up to her neck. She had <laughs> legs that went all the way up to her hips. <laughs> she had legs. She Two had legs. Two of them. I noticed them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're they just quoting. Legs. Now we're just quoting Hemingway Noir. She, she writes it down. Legs. <laughs> just she, legs. Wow. Metaton? Okay, so. Uh, 
non-natural 20. Mm-hmm. So, you know that, um, probably because you distill your own alcohol, because alcohol has medicinal purposes, yep. um, you know that certain things that go into making alcohol are water-soluble. Uh, so, uh, by adding drops, droplets of water, he's dissolving those particular things that are in the whiskey and just completely changing the taste of the whiskey. Huh. I'll teach their own. I mean, he was a scientist, right? Yeah, fair. Like, he was super smart, right? He's, he's got, like, a huge intelligence. Um... So, you know, he, he's a whiskey guy. She, she'll ask him a bit about, like, what he did before he ended up at the labs. Oh, before he ended up at the labs. Um, yeah. So, actually, this is an entire story. story. He says that he started off um, in a little community um, that was in the ruins. Um, it, it was a... Uh, they had a, a gang there. It was, like, like, across... More than bandits, but less than raiders. Okay. Mostly drug, mostly drug runners. They right. they produced and ran drugs, um, and uh, he uh did a few. Like he, he's not specific about what he did, but like he he was able to get out of there with a not insignificant amount of caps. And uh, he uh, he he was raised by his father, and um. He once his father died, he got away with a bunch of caps and made it, uh, made it a living, um, doing odds and ends. And eventually, he kind of started his own like business. Isn't the right word, especially in the wasteland. Mm. But he 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 had ways of making money through other people, mm. uh, and it kind of spread out. So he basically had like people selling stuff in. And doing stuff in other towns. Okay. Uh, and, you know, delivering things to him and him, you know, going like, oh, the this possibly has an opportunity to make some caps. And he's like, okay, well, I'll go do that then. And so he would do that. And eventually, he it was pretty good. He actually made a decent, like a decent living. Mm. And then he found the labs. Um, and he, no matter where you live, it's still a dangerous place unless you have things like the labs. You know, giant walls, high security, good science. So he decided to stay there because he was always a like even even though he he, he always had a thing for science and um, things like that. He he loved medicine, he loved um, chemistry, he loved um, all this other science stuff. So he he uh, he found a calling, mm. and he slowly dissolved the um, the his connections outside the labs because. You know, why do you need 10,000 caps when everything you have is right there? Mm. So he was just saving up. And that's actually why he was using um, Sal, was to, you know, help tie all those off and do all the numbers and things like that. Mm. Um, she'll mention that there might be a place from at the Chandry, depending on what, um, what the others think. He starts lifting off. He starts listing off his qualifications. It takes a while. It's Wendy and Teddy. You'll have to convince, not me. Fair enough. Um, but honestly, I was hoping to stick with you guys for a while. I mean, we're going to be heading right into the thick of the danger. You know that, right? Um. Yeah, boy. You guys seem capable. And everything else seems to happen when you're away. So. Trust besides, me, things happen when we're there, too. Fair, but you also saved my life. And I pay my debts. So. Well, we were repaying a favor. We were repaying a debt. I mean, you helped us get out when we needed to. Ugh, <laughs> uh, that's. He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, look, I'm too drunk to deal with like multiple layers of favors. Granted. Let's just say we're even. Let's just okay. say we're even. Okay. And say I still want to help you guys. You do understand that. You do that. We. 
we'll try and keep you safe. We we look out for each other, but. Thren, we... Thren, and he holds out a hand to you. Do you remember the fire extinguisher? <laughs> I do. That was, that was a good. highlight of my year. That was pretty good. He 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 like like he does that like he like he starts to internalize things like you can see that look on his face and he's like, I was a badass. <laughs> All right, Dick Tracy, don't get cocky. Another round. Oh God. He's, and, <laughs> he, he's ordering you drinks, but halfway through this, you realize he said he didn't have any caps. Uh. <laughs> Who's picking up this tab, Alphonse? Is it me? Uh, oh. He turns to Sarah. Do you trade? And she's like, sure. Cool. She he brings up his duffel bag, unzips it. He opens it up, and there's a bunch of shit in. It's like it's a full size duffel bag, like a like a camping duffel bag. And he opens it up, and there's a bunch of stuff in here, and he just like rummages around in it. You see a bunch of shit in there. You see what could be a pit boy. You see what could be a stealth boy. You definitely see a a, a fusion core. And a um, bunch of other stuff. While he's doing this, is Belle still slumped over the bar? Yes. She just kind of shuffles her bar stool next to Belle and just kind of leans her head on his shoulder. <laughs> just murmurs. Belle, we picked up another one. <laughs> my, feeling, my feelings exactly. We're building another room, it'll be fine. <laughs> she just snuggles. He, like, leans drunkenly into you. Uh, here's another interesting thing, too, is that, um, because he's, he, like, Alphonse is, like, I don't know how much, I don't know how much he's cell phone anymore, but how much can this get me? And he just slams a stack of cash onto the table. Like, old world cash? Old world cash. Like, hundred dollar bills, a stack of them. What the hell do you have pre-war money for? Reasons. Uh, <laughs> it's good Tinder. And okay. he, he just like stacks like five things of it on the table. I don't know how much that'll get me. And so he like counts it and goes, I'll give you 50 caps. And just takes the whole thing and just like puts it on the counter. <laughs> there, you cleared your tab. Ugh. I'll have about hit my limit. I don't want to hang over tomorrow. Come on! Come on! Don't be like that. Is he drunk? He's a little bit. He he looks a little drunk. He doesn't seem like slosh, but he seems a little drunk. I will have. He's at that point. He's at the tipping point. I will have one more drink, and then we are both getting Belisarius back to the Chandri before we are both too drunk to carry him. Okay, and he goes. Okay, one more. He's gonna order the biggest pint he can, isn't he? he? He like tells us Sarah and he goes, I want two shots of the strongest thing you have. Top shelf! Yeah. No lower. She like looks behind her and looks at the top shelf. He goes, he uses it. He goes, no, no, I mean, the best thing you have. And she reaches under the counter and pulls out, um, what appears to be a bottle of wine from the 1800s. Hold oh, down, that's some good wine. How the <laughs> hell do you have that? People trade for shit, and no one wants to spend 100 caps on a bottle of wine. Fuck that, Sarah, you should be saving that for, like, when Riley, I don't know, fucking graduates from college if we build one, I... It's already open. Oh, okay. I just squeezed the cork super tight. Fair enough. Like I have a press back here. We anyway. graduate from college when we build one. Yeah. When we build one. <laughs> so she pops out the cork, and you can immediately just smell like, oh, because does does Thunity drink wine? I go with you occasionally. Okay, and she pours you both a glass. And and actually, she pulls you a glass, and then she looks at Alphonse and goes, just waits for a moment, and goes, oh. And he, like, rummages around his bag again. Uh. How about this? And he just puts a fusion core on the table and goes, okay. 
Fix that. Pulls him a glass. Um, she just shakes her head. Um, she will savor the wine appropriately. She will let it breathe. She will smell the bouquet. All that stuff that people who drink know how to do. Fancy <laughs> wine. He, he, actually, you do that, but then Alphonse like outdoes you. <laughs> Like, he out-pretentiouses you. <laughs> she's not trying to be pretentious. She just doesn't get to have wine very much, and she's trying to, um, what's the word, get the most out of it. True. Fair enough. But he, he seems to be, like, he seems to be a connoisseur of, of, of the wine. He seems, to, he seems to know what he's doing. In which case, um, when she sees that he is doing what she is doing, but more so, she had been about to take a sip, she stops... And she starts copying him. <laughs> oh, so okay, so yeah, uh, I guess you keep doing what he, you do what he's doing, and you find another layer of the wine. Um, you, you probably you probably do this thing that looks super pretentious, and he breathes it in through both nostrils with his mouth open. Threnody giggles, but copies that as well. You get like this, like whiff of like, like. You smell it, and then it goes onto your tongue, and you get this like totally different. It's completely new, like it's it's brand new. You've Wait, never seen. She it. appreciates this, but she is mostly just making fun of him. Oh yeah, no, it looks it looks super stupid, <laughs> and he knows it too. He knows it looks stupid, but it's a wine, and he doesn't get to have wine often, so he's enjoying it. Fair. And then you know he does the whole like twirling it and looking it, looking through the glass. And uh, he eventually drinks it. At one point, Threnody does get out her st- her stethoscope and listen to the wine. <laughs> he like leans in a little bit and he goes, "Cavalry will speak to you." Oh my god! <laughs> Let Thren- the vintage into your heart. Thren bats at okay, him with the end of the. Okay, I will. Thren bats at him with the end of the stethoscope and takes a sip. He, after he takes a sip, he, he sits on the counter and goes, Mmm, would go on good on a salad. It's it's kind of an agree. Mm-hmm. Expect it would be. It's a little bit, yeah. She's like, <laughs> yeah, it's four, it, so it 400 is, years old. It is, several, it is a few centuries old, Alphonse. I think that's to be expected. Good wine. Good wine. Thank you, Sarah. And then you slam the glass. Oh my god. <laughs> All that refined shit, and then you just slam the whole thing. <laughs> the Empire soldiers in the background going, Oh my god, you guys. Just take shots. No, they're passed out at this point. Good. They, they, they are also <laughs> lightweights. They match Belisarius, so they're gone. Yep. The typical pub patrons, loud, rowdy, and probably passed out. Yep. In that order. So, yep, um, so you and Alphonse get a glass, he drinks, you drink. What do you do afterwards? Uh, Threnody is going to enlist his help in taking Alf, um, in taking Belisarius back to the Chandri so Belisarius can sleep off what is bound to be a hangover. Uh, so he, uh, he's like, sure, I'll... He looks over at Belisarius. Yeah, sure, I'll help. And he like pulls out like a a, a, a matching pair of yellow gloves and he puts them on and he helps you. Hey, <laughs> what are you implying? Uh, I might be contagious. I don't know. Oh my Caution. god, he's just drunk. No, I'm saying me. Look, I I'm so used to wearing the gloves for, to do things for safety. Ah. Uh. Sorry, I, I, should, I should probably learn not to do that, but... Force of habit. Yeah, force of habit. Well, come on, as long as you are got the upper body strength enough to carry him. Yep, yeah, sure. And he actually seems to have enough body strength himself to carry Belisarius. Yeah, well, Trinity's helping. Yeah. No sense in one of him carrying him. He's surprisingly strong for a man of his size. Hmm. Okay, uh, take Bell back to the Chandry, get him situated in wherever he sleeps. I'm assuming he has somewhere. Yes, he has a cot. 
So, uh, yes. And then Alphonse is like, um, night. Yeah, uh, speak oh. to Wendy or Teddy. They should be able to find a spare cop for you. I'm going to okay. stay with him, make sure he doesn't swallow his tongue. Kind of sways a little bit. Okay. And then he night. turns around and kind of walks off. You notice he walks off in the same direction as the colander. Okay. Like he's, by. he's like walking by and he sees like, ooh. He walks into it. She just basically ooh. follows after him and kind of t- doesn't even take his arm this time. Just takes him by the back of the jacket and marches him to Wendy and says, Wendy, we need to find somewhere to put this. Am I, am I not? Is no one allowed in that room? Is that something I should know? <laughs> yeah, just don't touch anything. Especially when or... you're drunk. Yes, ma'am. Wendy, do we have a spare cart? Wendy's like, yeah, we, we have plenty. Yeah. This probably isn't the first time you've just let someone sleep to, to sleep off something. Yeah, she is going to get Alphonse situated, and then she's going to stay with Bell again to make sure he doesn't swallow his own tongue. By the way, he's never he's never not had his uh, duffel bag, even when he was helping with Bella's eyes. He already had he always had it. Yeah, it makes so sense. He... Yeah. She will make sure that he has his duffel bag when he goes to sleep. Yep. He actually he has like his arms around it. He's not letting it go. Like, my stuff. You can't have. I. I... Mm. Yep. Mm. Cool. Well, Thren is gonna probably end up dozing in next to Belle's cot, and that's basically her for the night. Okay. I mean, she'll probably check. I'll, I'll probably have her like check on Clark, but I'm assuming he's sleeping off his probably his treatment. And she most so, and she trusts yep. Elswin to keep an eye on him. So, clock's off on the room. Osmond's just clocked. Claire, what's Claire? She's just looking around with her... Looking around with her no adopted sibling. Um, I mean, it's getting night. It's like it's like getting late into the night. Where, where are you sleeping? Uh, I don't know. She'll probably find somewhere. She'll find somewhere for Cecil first, and then probably just crash out in the same room. I mean, there's always the... Cards. That too. I mean, if she can't find a room, she'll just crash out in the car. I mean, the cots, the COTs. Oh, the, yeah. Probably cool. one Claire, of those. perception. Can you um, penalty for sleeping? Okay, I'll be going for my bag to get more junk food, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, hold Okay, so, um, hmm. Something wakes you in the night. Just and it's straight movement. out. Yeah, well, uh, something wakes you in the night, and it's definitely movement. Um, and you get the sense that, you know, something's... You know, your good combat senses kind of go off, like, oh, okay, what's going on, what's going on? Yeah, like, she's just straight out. You get, that, uh, you get that tingling in the back of your neck, like, okay, hold up, someone's someone's around here. I'm looking like, around. Yeah, you're getting, looking around, and you notice that... Um, Complete like stock still. Cecil is like crouched, like knelt down next to your bag, and he has half a snack cake stuck in his mouth. He's looking up at you. She just sort of reaches down uh, to the snack cake, snaps half of it off, puts it in her mouth, and lays back down again. He like a visual sigh of relief. You hear him pop, take out a Nuka Cola, pop the top, and drink it, and then go back to bed. <laughs> and with that coming up near the hour, I think we end the session. It's a good session, guys. Okay. I hope everyone loved it. Alrighty. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Take care, and good night. <laughs>